Black Myth Wukong in-game cutscene has left us with a lot of speculations about his story. You've probably noticed there is a beautiful but somewhat sad song played in the background. And you are right. The song is about a heartbreaking love story. A couple, mutually in love, but couldn't live happily ever after. Its lyrics are flooded with metaphors and metonymies from Chinese poetry. So in this video, let's decompose them and see if you were in the same situation as the protagonists did. The lyrics. While both are talking about their love towards each other, the male and female protagonists have very different perspectives. The male wants to make his name to prove himself worthy of her, while the female wants nothing more than his company. To better understand the subcontext of their lines, we have to dive into the poetry references in the lyrics. I've divided them into two categories, story-driven which clearly indicates their side of story, and emotion-driven, which we can all agree it could come in handy when you want to say something romantic or deep. So first, the story-driven ones. A lonely boat in the first line is from Meng Haoran. When writing this poem, Meng was over 40 years old, yet still having succeeded in the court. The reason why the male protagonist uses this particular poem as a start is to say that he feels the same struggle. 
he's still nobody after all these years of grinding. And his second line is from Lin Longqi. The original poem says, "Like lovebirds, you and I, yet cannot fly to each other because an owl is hunting in the woods." The male protagonist believes their separation is forced due to external factors. Just like the lovebirds in the poem, avoiding their predator, but we all know by now, he left her by choice, seeking to be successful. So there's no external factor to begin with. And is he really seek nothing more of this life, like he says he is? You see, this dilemma also applies to you and I. Would you sacrifice love over career? With this question in mind, let's move on to the female's perspective. The vain hope of being together, I waited my hair gray, is from Li Bai. Originally, it is lamenting the transients of life and the inevitability to grow old. The female uses this poem to say how long they've been apart. After all these years of separation, she has never stopped loving him. The purgation spring is from Journey to the West, and it links to the Spider Ladies, the ones we've seen in the trailer. Because of this reference, a disproportionate number of fans believe the hidden bridegroom is Pixie. Cause in chapter seventy-two, Pixie transformed into an eel and made love to the Spider Ladies while they were bathing in the purgation spring. To see blue sky is from a story happened in chapter sixty-two. At the sacrifice kingdom, where the monks were heavily punished and suppressed because of losing their holy treasure, when Wu Kong caught the monsters who stole their treasure, the monks there burst into tears. Hooray! We can finally see blue sky. The great sage has brought back the thieves. The female protagonist believes. They will have a happy ending, and the happiness will be even more cherished after all the bitterness they've endured. When I may achieve glory and fame is from Wu Kong in Chapter Five. Let us seek today's pleasure in poetry and wine, and cease asking when we may achieve glory or fame. The male protagonist surely has his doubts and regrets. But all he can do now is to numb himself with liquor. The shame of unsuccess increases with age, and haunts him day and night, which only drives him even further down this path. There's not one ever willing to turn back. Is also from Wu Kong. It was his observation towards ordinary human being when he lives among them for the first time in Chapter One. I think here, the female protagonist is trying to remind the male that this pursuit leads to nowhere and it never ends, because Wu Kong's observation goes like this: When will end this quest for fortune and fame? This tyrant of early rising and retiring late, riding on mules, they long for noble steeds, but now prime ministers, they hope to be kings. For food and raiment, they suffer stress and strain, never fearing Yama's call to reckoning. Seeking wealth and power to give to sons of sons, there's not one ever willing to turn back. The quiet of hills is from Huang Tingjian. All the longings of this mortal life are noise. I would prefer the quiet of hills. Well, <laughs> it's quite ironic for the male protagonist to say this because. He himself never stops chasing the longings. Yet green hills cannot match fair waters. Is from a debate between a lumberjack and a fisherman in chapter nine. They were arguing about whose occupation is better by comparing the location of their trade. I think this reference can be viewed as a subtle sarcasm from the female, in response to his contradiction between his words and actions. As he keeps talking about how he wants to leave the material longings behind, but、uh, never stops chasing them. Standing alone on the bridge with the wind through my sleeves is from Feng Yanshi. 
standing alone on the bridge with wind through my sleeves, the only company I got is the shadow of trees casted by the new moon from the field afar. Yes, he feels lonely, but he still can go back to her. Their love is deep and true, which leads us to the emotion-driven references. I'll go through this section quickly, so here we go. My deep sorrow will last till with you I have met is from Bai Juyi. Oh, how can I forget? How can I not regret? My deep sorrow will last till with you I have met, waiting from moonrise to moonset. Our hearts have won, and your ears can hear my inner call. Is from Li Shangyin. Having no wings, I can't fly to you as I please. Our hearts have won, and your ears can hear my inner call. Knowing my head is tangled with thoughts, yet not knowing what I truly want from you, is from the book of poetry. I've changed the translation a bit to fit the story. The original poem is. Those who know me will say my heart is sad and bleak. Those who don't know me may ask me for what I seek. When can our hands we hold? Is also from the book of poetry. When can our hands we hold and live till we grow old? As fallen flowers drift and water runs its way, is from Li Qingzhao. As fallen flowers drift and water runs its way, one longing leaves no traces. But overflows two places. Oh, how can such love sickness be driven away? From eyebrows kept apart, again it gnaws my heart. It still be worthwhile even if the west wind sweeps all to dust. Is from Qian Shi. Although the original poem is not about love, but I reckon this citation is to show their hope and determination. No matter the circumstances, their love will never change. Lost in thoughts, whole rainy night is from Cui Daorong. Pity, over thirty years I have walked the earth, but never to the far west. Through waters and mountains, another year has passed. Lost in thoughts, whole rainy night, somehow they occupy my mind out of surprise. A false despair is from Xin Qiji. While young, I knew no grief I could not bear. To write new verses with a false despair. I know what grief is now that I'm old, but only say I'm glad that autumn is cold. Found memories only make me suffer more from sickness. Is from Wang Wei. You may notice that this line is paraphrased, because the literal translation of Hong Dou is red beans. A typical metonymy in Chinese to say you miss someone. It's fair to say that red bean paste is the oriental chocolate, also a great filling of buns. Love is something beyond my control. Is from Lu You. Emotions are beyond our control for people like us. Back and forth till time passes and our hair is gray. Years passed, but I kept the house exactly the same. Is from Cui Hu. This quatrain is in memory of a beauty the poet met with in the preceding year. In the poem, the house is kept the same, but the beauty is no longer there. But in the lyrics, the female protagonist is using this citation to provide assurance that she is still waiting for him. So when he comes back, if he comes back, he'll not just find an empty house. Peach blossom is a common metonymy for beauty or love in Chinese. We can also find them everywhere at the spider lady's courtyard. Which is quite fitting to the general theme of the story, both in trailer and in the song. So, in summary, it is a beautiful love story, but may not have a happy ending. What choices would you make if you were the protagonists? Have you sacrificed love or career or quote unquote success? Leave a comment if you like to share your story. Also, I know this whole episode sounds like school. So if you made this far, give yourself a pat on the shoulder. Well done. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now class dismissed.